Hello and welcome to another furry side play. Me, game of six. This one of Don Course Halloween special, or what did they call it? Yep, just Halloween. Anyways, before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, I think you can get this for free. I'm not sure. You might just have to look. And yeah, I guess we reset our face. And start. Unfortunately, it was a bit late for Halloween because this came out yesterday, and yesterday was Halloween, so yeah. Uh, well, I want to see it, I guess. Though, what, what NSFW stuff's on here? Choose a name for your character, Avowo. Yeah, I guess I could censor it. The sunlight hits my close eyes, painting my vision red. It's warm and welcoming, the gentlest alarm clock ever created. But I don't want to get up. If I get up, I have to let go of him. Soon the ride will be over, though. We can't remain like this forever, can we? A paw rests on my arm. He must be awake. I hope he says nothing. I hope we get to exist here a bit longer, in the space between words. Finding comfort in them. Good morning. Hey, we're almost there. Wait. Is this the beginning of Don Chorus? So the moment ends. Morning. Ugh. So hard to wake up with the dream still holding me by the ankle and not letting go. I'm dreaming of a lake. The same lake I spent the whole evening with Mi uh, Miko at just the two of us. The warm light of the setting sun on the long fur of his arm, standing up. He's so pretty. How close are we? The bus slows down and makes a tight turn, driving up the gentle slope of the mountain. A mountain. I open my eyes reluctantly, but the sight I see is sweet and soul-stirring, my childhood friend. Smiling gently, me and him reunited. Sleepyhead. Come on, grab your jacket. We've pretty much arrived. Just the last stretch of the road. The bus drives onto the gravel, and half of the bus stands up, crowding the corridor, packing and getting ready to leave, when a voice from the front cuts through the noise. Everyone, please, sit down. Wait until the bus has stopped. Reluctantly, everyone returns their seats. I stretch my muscles, stiff after a night, night long ride, and feel around for my phone. I have it. I have it in my phone. You trying for my phone and I have my phone in my phone so I can phone. Just my jacket and my bag, both in the compartment above me, and I'm good to go. Hey, it crushed my arm, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. I would just like to have the blood flow back. So, this hard bar under my back isn't part of the seat. I sit up straight and stretch again, groaning, feeling life come back to my limbs. How long have I been lying on it? The last hour, no longer. Nothing terrible. I didn't want to wake you up, and it was nice to stay cuddled like that. I want to cuddle. My heart flutters. I never thought our union would go like this. Okay, everyone, let's go now. We're here. I wonder which room is go I'm going to get. Something on the upper floor would be nice. Hopefully. Who are you rooming with? Oh, no one. I took a single room. Oh, you didn't want a roommate? Well, I don't know other people around the club that well. It would be nice to have someone, but it seemed like everyone already had a roommate. What about you? Arvo. Is Arvo here? Oh, I think it's my turn. Just a moment. Here, Professor. Single room, correct? Actually, can I still change my choice? Quite late for that, but there are a few spare rooms, so it depends on the kind of room you'd like to change to. A double room? If... Uh, I'd like to room with Miko. Devin looks through the list. The only free rooms have a king bed. That should be fine, I think. Wait, I'll ask him. Miko? I called the wolf and gesture for him to come, much to his surprise. 
Want to take a room with me? Only double rooms available have one bed, though. God, I hated it when we did like a geology trip and it was four people to a room but with only two beds. And it kind of sucked because the person next behind me, well, the person I was sleeping with was kind of close and I was just like, I couldn't sleep all that night. Oh, of course, I'd love to. No problem then. The room was meant to be yours. In was meant to be yours is a double room, and here you are. Devin procures a key from the a bunch line on the reception counter. Already reading the next name on the list. Gut Gudrun, I got your room key. We're roommates. Everyone's who's already got their key, please go to your rooms, unpack, and be in the cafeteria in thirty minutes. It's behind the door, at the end of this corridor. We should go drop off our stuff. I can't wait to get this backpack off me. Neat. The first word that pops in my head when I look around. The room isn't big, but it doesn't feel cramped either. If anything, I'm amazed how well they've used the space. The walls here are also wooden, with one tasteful painting hanging above the bed, the bed for decoration. The bed, covered by a colorful patchwork, is big enough to fit at least two people comfortably. I can't wait to try it out. <laughs> try that out with Miko. Ooh, ooh. I can already tell we're gonna love our stay here. So much space here. Oh, look at this view. Even better than our grand floor. Yeah. From here, we glance over at the trees and see a vast white green expanse of the forest creeping its way up the mountain. Which half of the bed do you want? Doesn't matter to me, you can pick. I'll take the one with the windows, uh, window side, and I like looking at the night sky. Ah, yeah, you always liked the moon a lot, didn't you? I remember how we spent long minutes leaned on the windowsill, eyes open wide and watching, waiting for the pale white orb to grace the silky black fabric of the sky. I'll go grab the rest of my bags. Be back in a moment. The door closing behind the wolf echoes the empty room for longer than I expected. The silence that crept in, its absence was oppressive. It's so easy to feel at ease with him. Without him around, the doubts start resurfacing. Where is it? Uh, where is this headed? What's between us? We haven't seen each other for three years. After a gap like that, it would have it wouldn't have been weird to feel like two strangers. Instead, our friendship resumed effortlessly. But there were reasons we stopped talking after you we went to different schools. We haven't touched on any of them yet. Like my feelings for the wolf, how it hurt to be around him, longing for him, waiting, wanting him closer and closer. The tidal push and pull, me pushing him away and coming back to bask in that sweet light of our Oxytonin pumping through my system as it cuddled the sweet whiff. And the times when he disappeared for days, sometimes warned me beforehand that he was hiking with other friends, sometimes without a word. Yeah, I always hate that when friends would do that, or like mainly very close friends where it's like, hey, we talk mo most of the time, and then suddenly nothing for like weeks, maybe a month. It's like, uh, you okay, dude? I don't want to bring any of that up now, though. Not yet. Now are the good days. Now I want to enjoy his company, as that I'm so starved for. The door opens, and I hear the tiptoeing, and then two thin arms wrap around my chest from behind, Miko snuggling himself into me. He's warm and soft. His scent envelops me in a gentle hug, too. Hey there. Mm, hey. Something troubling you? Huh? Why are you asking? You're standing at, staring out the window in silence with a gravely serious face. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have even have to know you as well as I do to know something's wrong. For some reason my reading just sucked. I was just thinking about all the time we've lost. Well, we're here now. Time to make up for them, for them right? I don't want to get to the Halloweeny part. Sun pours to the cafeteria, warm and sweet. 
We're a bit late, and the place is already packed, but there's still a few unoccupied seats here and there. Oh, I see Travis there. Want to sit with him? Sure, sounds good. Hey, can I sit here? Or there? Miko, of course you can. You're saving a spot. You and Arvo, of course. Thank you. Did we miss anything? Not yet. The food should be here in a moment. Oh, I'm glad. I wouldn't forgive myself if we miss lunch. I'm Bjorn, by the way. It's nice to meet you. You too. I'm Arvo. And I bet you know Miko already. Actually, I don't. But Travis, Travis mentioned you both. I tried looking for you in the lobby, but you disappeared somewhere. I haven't seen... Uh, I haven't seen your room yet, even. Eh? Oh, I'm in the room with Arvo. A sudden change of plans. Not an unwelcome one, I hope. If you wanted your own room, after all, I wouldn't be sad about it. Oh no, I definitely prefer to stay with you. Aw, I'm so happy for you two. Also gay. Happy? So, do you know it's for lunch? No, not yet. A smooth change of topic, though. I feel like I'm out of the loop as well. What was Travis talking about? I'm happy with how things are going, too, though. I feel like we're finally back in a to our old selves around each other. It's a good choice to write Miko before the ride and ask if he needed help with the bags. And something between us changed as well. Changed when we fell asleep, leaned on each other for extra comfort. All the stuff that happened between us after we finished school didn't matter that much anymore when we started weaving new threads over those. We're working together towards something new, I'm sure of that. Is the spooky Halloween parts the relationship stuff? The setting sun, maybe the prettiest time of the day. Certainly, all of the more here, where the mountains meet the sea, and all the slopes are painted peach and red across the snow-covered canvas. The way pre uh, pressed against my side, feeling so precious. My woof. The beauty of the sunset pales in comparison. They also enhance each other. The way the clouds reflect in his glasses, and the golden lines on his fur. And how much more meaningful the sunset is when you watch each other, watch it together from the sofa, listening to the gentle murmur of conversations. Can't wait for it already. Really? It's almost two weeks away, and we have the, we have the camp there, or here. Easily the more exciting event. Five days and four nights instead of one for instance, and a great location. Oh, this place is so spooky too. The atmosphere here is just right for Halloween. Wait, you don't like Halloween? Not really. It's cultural imports. It's a cultural import. While we already have Allen Heiser Challenging Dike just two days later, and its traditions are much less rooted in consumerism. No fun. It's a holiday, okay? But it's a sad occasion. No one is happy for All Saints Day. Well, good point. Also, today is a spooky day too. I checked and we... Suddenly I was just thinking, what's tomorrow? Anyways, we should have the blood moon today. Ooh, it's today? That's not good. Come on, don't tell me you believe in that. Blood moon? Yeah. It goes completely red, like blood. Also that face? I don't think I've seen that before. Ooh, ooh. Anyways. Let's hope for a clear sky tonight, looming over these mountains. It would be a fantastic view. It's the spookiest full moon of the eclipse season. The blood moon beckons all the supernatural beings. They roam the land, looking for a feast. That, are we going to have like a werewolf encounter? Because there was that whole werewolf thing in uh, Dawn Chorus. There barely are any in the city, but here, who knows what might happen. It's a time when the Sylvian monsters wake up. Those sleeping beneath the tree roots, slumbering in total darkness. Sometimes even the monsters inside us do. 
Oh, enough of this. You're not scaring anyone. Better review the mat uh, material on the moon before tomorrow's lectures instead. Buzzkill. Arvo, Miko, what do you say about a spooky walk in the forest tonight? I think I'll pass. Oh, really? I thought you'd like a walk. Sounds quite nice. Maybe some other occasion? I'm not that much of a fan of spooky things. Uh, understandable. Maybe you, Arvo? I think I'll stay with Miko, but thank you. Louis hides his blushing face, pressing on my shoulder. Aw, cute. You two are so gay together. What? No. Very cute. I pet the wolf's fuzzy cheek. It's burning from embarrassment. Okay, stop, or I'll catch on fire. He's spooky. Back in the room, away from the crowds, away from the noise, just the two of us. Me and Miko. The wolf stands at the window, looking out at the cloudy sky, with eyes wide open. Hey, everything okay? He jumps a bit, startled, when I touch his shoulder. There's a gleam in his blue, uh, big blue eyes when he turns around to face me. Yeah, I'm just overwhelmed a bit. I know that feeling. By what? It's been such a nice, chill day so far. Yeah, this exactly. I haven't had this much fun with anyone in a long time. It has to do with you now. But it's been so sudden. I didn't have time to prepare for it or for the feelings I feel. And I... What do you feel? You're the most important person to me. You always were. You... Miko steps close to me, his snout almost touching my chest. He trembles slightly as he speaks. The same thing I felt back when you used to be close. Back then, I was seeing you every day. I swear, his eyes tell me what he wants to say. Or is it me looking at what I want to hear in them? What does he hide behind those beautiful eyes? What does he want to tell me, each prolonged moment stretching with an unbearable tension? His lips part. It's time for me to make take the step forward. The moment is here, but it falters. It's a tipping point. It's now or never. And if I let it pass by, my eyes, I regret it forever. I take his paw and find it soft and warm, eager to be held. In my glassy, tear-stained vision, his two eyes, like saucers, look at mine, innocent. Miko, I'm sorry I was this stupid, and for so long. I felt something for you, too. I had fallen for you years ago, and I thought I'd forgotten these feelings. But with you here, with me, I think I love you. I lean in, my sound snout searching for his, and he sh shakes my paw away. His eyes weren't looking at mine. With mouth open, he's looking above my shoulder, outside, somewhere. He's tense. He takes a step back, and then another, and then disappears. He turns away, and then he's gone. Snowflakes fall on my head. I run ahead, calling out. Miko! Miko! I'm sorry! Where are you? Nothing. Only the sound of wind howling. My voice sounds weak. Maybe it's muted by the vast openness of the fields. Or maybe it's my own body giving up on in this weather. My confidence is running low. I suddenly see a distant figure. Miko! It moves. It seems to peek for, at me for a second, but then turns back quickly and starts moving away. A sun's short surge of energy fills me as I leap forward and jump above the snow. I get closer and start to recognize Miko's features. He's struggling to make much progress in deep snow. It's snow this deep, and I quickly catch up. Miko, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Arvo. I stop my tracks. His voice is shaky. It doesn't sound entirely his. A chill runs down my spine. The wolf silhouette shines between the trees, with the reddish glow of the blood moon directly above him. Then he turns around and looks directly at me. His pupils widen, and his breathing slows down. Every following flowing cloud, and his mouth comes out denser. Miko? 
He grunts and growls, instinctively back up a bit. His flus, flus tremble. What's flus? His canines blink in and out in, in the moonlight. Mika moves his shoulders, circling them back and forward. I hear a quiet crack and look down, but realize no one's moved. Instead, one of the seams on Miko's jacket is giving up. Miko. The entire torso falls and rises with each breath, and, at, but it does so unevenly, not coming to its previous size each time, instead staying expanded. His clothes are more and more strained with each second, chest pressed against the fabric, his arms wrapped around tightly, each second filled with tiny cracks and rips all over his body. You would think he'd undress, you know? Wolf's eyes are staring directly at me, his snouts vibrating and with growling, his teeth consciously showing, his neck widened, muscles flexing back and forth, peeking from below the too small collar. No. Oh. Sudden realization fills me with dread. I try to move, but feel frozen in place. Before me, my friend's transforming. He rips his jacket apart with a single swift move. His frame, once meager, now barely held by the strained t-shirt, mus muscular chest and torso, clearly sh showing through the thinned out fabric, his arms elongated, reaching below his hips, bursting out with muscle, fur dark and dense. Miko. Oh, this is a different picture. I thought they were going to reuse the uh, thing from, uh, you know, the werewolf thing. The werewolf throws his head back in house, shredding all remaining wardrobe. Ooh, ooh. I barely take a peek when the piercing shriek restore, restores control over my legs. I strafe backwards, barely staying up. My paws hit the snow as I head towards the nearest trees. I hear sh short snarl behind. Everything becomes a blur. Black bark against the snow, flashing like a kaleidoscope. Something jerks my arm. I turn my head, but there's nothing behind, only broken branches. I try to keep my tempo, but the exertion starts to take its hold. I almost stumble and rub my arm against a try? Tree? Sending my scarf flying behind me. No time to pick it up as I push forward. The trees around me thin out. Moonlight becomes brighter, and a small opening appear appears before me. An empty spot with nothing but an old tree stump in the middle. I hardly catch a breath, limping forward. It's towards it, and starting to, to look around all around me. I can read, I swear. There's nothing but the odd silence of the night forest, and my frantic heartbeat. I'm lost. Can I find my way back to the guest house somehow? I can't even see the light from here. Panicked, I look around. I take out my phone and call the first person I can think of. Like, like, can you hear me? The lion's voice is like a warm blanket. I somehow get the phone service in the middle of the forest. Harvo, where are you? You and Miko left, and we're all worried about you. See, I hear some fuss, and Lake's phone is switched to hands-free. I hear Coach Devin and Reed in the background. They're all there, and really come looking for me. I'm in the forest, maybe south of the guest house, I think. There's an empty patch of land with a stump here. I pan between the words, my breath condensing into clouds. I'm low on energy already. I'm trying to come back, but I'm lost. I can't see the de guest house and Miko. What? No, uh, was it Miko even? I know what I've seen, but it seems so impossible that it must have been my mind playing tricks on me. I crack behind me. I instantly freeze in place, fur on my back standing up. Arvo, where? Wait, where was he? Arvo! Step by step, a great figure comes out from between the trees. Heavy, wide, paws firmly pressed into the snow, thick thighs revealing perfect muscular chirp before, per, below the fur, strong chest, and arms down low, leaning forward. Red eyes staring directly at me, growling snout showing teeth, 
He raises his hand with my red scarf in it and sniffs it deeply. It woozes him. Shouts from the other side become louder and more urgent. I drop my phone on the ground. Before I can act, the beast closes in with just two leaps, pushing me onto the stump onto the stump on my back. It covers me entirely, its massive body overshadowing the moon. It radiates profound heat, wild, untamed. Primal scent fills my head, and I'm just in case because it says there was could be NSFW stuff. Yep, that's uh, some NSSW stuff. Though I guess I could just cover that part right there. Uwu, that is a big uwu right there. It's Miko with the beastly features of a werewolf. I recognize my friend. Though I do wonder what happens if we switch this, because I'll just change it. Nope, there's still a wiener. I just turn it off if, um, you know, it goes to a wooey stuff, but it's probably going to be a wooey stuff. He growls at me and moves his snout close to my chest, pressing against my neck, big wet nose against my skin. My heart is racing as I look down, eager to find any escape. I glance over the wide chest of dense fur, down the narrow belt, and at Oof, uwu is hard and uwu. Okay, maybe now's the time to do that. Boop. Surrounded by thick fur with heavy uwu hanging below and leaving a wet uwu wet between stuff and places and hits it with an oddball that, oh yeah, I guess I have to select here. Miku, I... My eyes wander back to the huge maw in front of me, but Miko abruptly backs out and grabs me by the paw, with a single move ripping my clothes apart and throwing them aside. Dang, I need those clothes. It's cold out here. Hastily drawn drawings. Also, I thought it was big, but I'm sorry. That would rip poor Arvo in half, even if he was a hoe. I shiver, expecting the winter cold to envelop me, and said, a wave of wolves heat hits me. I'm thrown on some sideways, and Miko is leaning over me. I blink in surprise, when my mind catches up with what's happening, fear and excitement mix, overwhelming me. I feel myself getting a woo, control taken away from me. Huge arms guide and direct me like a toy, in the hands of an owner. His size, uh defines half the of my world his frame covered me from behind pulled me up on my upper and lower paw making me uh, rest sideways on the stump is something between places grinding and mm -hmm, wet smooth and low growl resonates through our bodies equals primal urges completely overtake any less thought he backs up just a bit Mm-hmm. Something spreads. Mm-hmm. He grabs onto the edge of the sump, relaxing. Uh... Yeah, if you want to read this, you can read it. Miko, it's never going to fit. Oh, I'm... Well, I am going to definitely have to center that part. Boop. Also, yeah. Hmm. Though, I guess I could just do that and I will listen to it myself because, I don't know. So I'll know when uh, stuff happens, but um, I'm sorry. Did the regular... I don't... Though I guess Don Chorus didn't have uh, SFX for certain scenes. Mm hmm. I mean, it's the magic of the furry universe. Someone who's never wooed before being able to take something that big. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Arvo is being like, is making sexy noises. Arvo's lost track of time. Could be seconds or hours of, you know, something happening. <laughs> the only thing coming to me from the outside are occasional voices coming from the dropped phone. Mm-hmm. And uh, Miko's lasting a bit longer, if you know what I mean. Yay, my fetish. Maybe we can switch back now? Boop. Miko, that was hot. Body's weak and limp. With great effort, I lift my arm to the werewolf's snout and gaze at the tip. Ooh. He leans it oh, of his muzzle. He leans into touch. It licks my paw in return. Poor boy. Mika's eyes shine with the moonlight. They onyx. In the same tenderness I've always known my friend for. His moments are now gentle. As he picks me up and sits down on the sun, creating me in his immense arms. I feel so warm still, even with the snow falling on us, Miko's breasts blow over my, you know, body like a furnace. Although the ringing through the ring in my ears subsides slowly, I can make out Coach Devon's inquiring urgent voice, a bit crushed and muffled by the phone speaker. I'm okay. Yeah. Gonna be walking to work tomorrow. I shout, hoping that they can hear me. More than okay. The massive snap points at mine, inquiring. Close my eyes and lick at the wet nose. Nico leans in, his tongue pouring my lips, and we finally kiss. Well, good. I always hate it in visual novels when they when they ooh woo, but they don't kiss. Like seriously, brah. Like it's not just a fetish. It's like base one. It's kissing, touching, and then I think there's more touching, but then it's like home base. Also, can't I have a werewolf boyfriend? Also being a werewolf boyfriend? I like being really strong. It is kind of funny being at the gym and being like, I am going to do these weights. Oh, I've already maxed out. Fuck. Because I do be like that sometimes. And so it's also kind of funny because I don't look the most muscular. And I'm like, well, I'll just click this and then click that. Ah. I thought I muted myself when I just, uh, gassed. Anyways, hopefully you didn't hear that. It could be a fetish. Oh yeah, and of this side play. So please comment, cause I like comment, so much you like, dislike. Tip checks up, so if you like my YouTube and likes it, well, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos to have a grown. Please remember to pay new year and most have control the pit population. And I just kind of want to check whether or not the Halloween special is halloween -y. Um, I mean, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whether you need to pay for stuff. Don Chorus. Man, the sad thing before when I was like, you could just listen to this thing, and then now I'm like, well, there's a there's sexy sounds happening, so no. Okay, yeah, it's free on itch.io. I you know. Was there something else I was gonna look at? Oh yeah, I, kind of wondering if I should have this like post today or another day or something like that. Or what's going to happen. I can always just 
knock down, I promise, a bit more because it is Christmassy time for that, anyways. So, like, why have it in November? The month that nobody really cares about. Thanksgiving. Unless you're, like, a boomer or something like that. Now, granted, I do love mashed potatoes, and I'll eat mashed potatoes till the day kingdom comes or something like that. I mean, potatoes are great. I could be Irish. Who knows? Is that not a great thing to say because I'm part British? Anyways, white people racism side. Um, yeah, end of this side play. Comment, spay, neuter animals, and if you want to play, it's I.O. And until next time, another side play. Me, Gamma, ooh, ooh, six of something else that could be a little spooky. Though I think we finished all the spooky um, visual novel stuff. So, thanks and see you.